Hi, I'm Joseph Gower. I'm a carpenter and general builder, and I'm here currently renovating my own home. Today, I'm gonna to show you a few tips and tricks for some projects that you can execute when you move into a new house. Those are how to cut laminate to fit behind a radiator pipe, how to cut ceramic tiles, how to sand and install wooden skirting board, how to cut out an electrical outlet in a plasterboard wall, and how to cut a copper pipe and hide it behind another wall. We're gonna start by cutting this laminate to fit around the radiator pipes. I'm gonna line up the laminate and then I'm gonna mark on the laminate exactly where the pipes are and cut them with a Dremel. After that, I'll use this offcut at the back to fill in the distance between the existing laminate and the skirting board. I'm gonna use the tape measure and I'm gonna check how far in we need to make the cut. So it's two centimeters in. Now using a set square, I'm gonna get a nice straight line. Now we have our marks on the board, ready to cut it with the Dremel. Okay, then we place the laminate on the workbench. We make sure it's clamped down firmly. That prevents it from slipping around when we make the cut. I already have the 561 spiral cutting bit inserted in the Dremel. And now I'm gonna attach the cutting guide. The laminate I know is six millimeters thick. So I'm gonna set the depth to 10 millimeters. I'm using the multi-purpose cutting kit instead of a jigsaw because it's quite small cuts and you have a lot more control and stability using the Dremel. I've set the RPM to 30,000. That leaves a really nice, clean and smooth cut on the laminate. Okay, we have a nice, perfect cut there. Let's go and put it around the radiator pipes. Okay, we're gonna line up the laminate with the pipes. That cuts perfect. Now we're gonna get the off cut and put it behind. If you need to, use one of the metal bars and a wooden mallet and use that to pull in the laminate. Now what I'm gonna do is use the one centimeter spacer, put it between the wall and the laminate that allows for any movement in the laminate over the years. Now we use the radiator collar to go around the pipe. This will hide any discrepancies and also leave a nice finish. Okay, the collars are now on. I think it looks perfect. Now I've shown you how to cut wooden laminate. The Dremel tool is also brilliant for cutting harder materials such as ceramic tiles. For that, we're gonna use the Dremel Max diamond cutting wheel. But before that, I'm gonna get a pencil and a tape and I'm gonna measure exactly what we need to cut. Pencil is nice to use because you can easily wipe it off clean. Then we get some masking tape and place it over the tile, which prevents the tile from chipping. Then you get a set square and you line it up with the marks on the tile and that gives us a nice straight edge. Make sure the Dremel is set to 20,000 RPM. That provides a nice clean cut. If you're cutting a large tile, I'd recommend using some water or lubricant to cool down the bit. And now I'm gonna flip the tile around to make sure that the corner of the cut is nice and finished. You won't see any of those lines because it will be on the underside of the tile. Now the Dremel's left a nice clean cut and this tile will fit perfectly around the door frame in my bathroom, which I'm gonna renovate another time. Okay, now we're gonna do some sanding of the skirting boards. This one here, I saw second hand, does require a nice bit of sanding to get it down to the original wood. If 
However, your apartment already has skirting boards installed, leave them where they are and sand them in place. If you remove them, you risk damaging the wall. Now, I'm gonna start with the big flat areas using the Bosch sander and an 80 grit paper. You can work your way up through the grits of paper to get the finish that you desire. And then, when I'm done with the large areas, I'm gonna use the Dremel and I'm gonna finish up all of those small, hard to reach areas in the molding. Now I'm gonna use the Dremel with the abrasive brush. I've set it to 15,000 RPM. That's slow enough so that we don't carve too deep into the wood. The abrasive brush has got into this nice groove here, but next I'm gonna use the flat wheel to get these slightly larger areas. Okay, that looks good to me, nice and smooth. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna give it a wipe with a damp cloth just to get rid of any of the excess dust. And then we're gonna give it a coat of primer. When that's dry, we can do two top coats and then it's good to go on the wall. Paint's now dry, got two coats on there and it looks brilliant. What I'm gonna do now is use some montage grip on the back of the skirting board and that's going to glue against the wall. Okay now we're going to change over to the acrylic cork and that's the seal between skirting board and the wall. And then we're going to use our finger to wipe the excess cork between the skirting board and the wall. Now wait 24 hours for the cork to dry and then give it a coat of paint and that will look absolutely perfect. So now we're gonna cut out an electrical box in the wall. I've marked an X already where the wires are. If you don't know where the wires are, you can use an electrical finder to check and also use a stud finder to check that you're not going into the stud work. I've switched off the electrical group so it's all safe to go. Now we take the electrical box, we place it in the middle of the X, we'll use a level to make sure it's perfectly square. Now we can take a pencil and trace around the box. That leaves us exactly where we need to cut. We're using the multi-purpose cutting kit again with a 5-6-0 spiral cutting bit. It has non-sharp edges, which is brilliant because if we do touch any of the wires in the wall, it won't damage the wire. I'm gonna set the depth to 15 millimeters because I know that the plasterboard is nine and a half millimeters. We don't wanna to go too deep because we wanna avoid any of the wires behind there. Now, I've set the RPM to 30,000. That gives it a nice smooth cut. Now if you stop just before the end, you can use a screwdriver and just pop out that piece. And there we have a hole for the electrical box. Now we're going to cut the wires down. Make sure you don't cut too much of the wire because when you need to access the socket again in the future, you don't want to get shocked. And now I've finished putting on the face plate and we have a socket ready to be used. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is remove this old sink so I can have a nice, clean, fresh wall. To do that, we're gonna take the sink off, the waste pipe, the flexi hose, and then we're gonna cut down this copper pipe. That will then be pushed into the wall, hidden and filled, and it will look lovely. Before we do that, 
we're going to switch off the water supply to the sink. And a little tip, you can turn on a tap somewhere else in the house and that will help draw out any of the extra water. Make sure you have a bucket and a sponge ready because when we undo the flexi hose, we're going to have a bit of water left inside the tap. Okay, what I'm going to do now is cut the copper pipe down so we can hide it inside the wall. Firstly, I'm going to get my stop end and I'm going to mark exactly on the pipe where I want to cut it. There's a little bit of movement on this pipe so we can easily push it into the wall. If however there wasn't, what we could do is cut a bigger hole into the plasterboard, do exactly the same process and then repair the plasterboard afterwards. I'm going to use the Dremel with the Dremel Max premium metal cutting wheel. The Dremel's perfect for cutting things like this water pipe in these hard to reach areas. I've set mine to 35,000 RPM. It's a perfect speed for cutting through the metal easily. Now I've cut the pipe, I need to deburr the edges so I can easily put the stop end on. To do that, I'm gonna use the 952 grinding stone. Now it's deburred, we can put the stop end on. Now the pipe's hidden in the wall, we could fill that, sand it, give it a coat of paint and we've got a great wall again. Now I've shown you these projects, I hope you have some tips and tricks for yourself when you're renovating a home or moving into a new place. All the best, good luck.